Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today, we're going to recap the Bears 2020 NFL Draft. And I'm going to give you my rating for their overall draft performance this year. Bearing in mind, of course, that they did not have a first-round pick because they traded the first-round pick to the uh, Las Vegas Raiders for uh, Khalil Mack. So, and again, I'm very happy that we have Mack. So, um, no problem with them not having a first-round pick for what they got for it. So, um, in previous video, which I will link to at the uh, in the uh, end screen so that you can click on that video if you want to. I did mention the first two picks that the Bears had. And that was Cole Komet, tight end, Notre Dame. Um, his hometown is Lake Barrington, Illinois. He's 6'6". And he, um, at Notre Dame last year, he caught 42 passes for a little over a six yard average. Um, he's not gonna wow anybody with his pass receiving ability. Um, but he does have a, a good frame for being a tight end and um, the Bears did need a tight end. They have Jimmy Graham, but Jimmy Graham's getting older and he's gonna need uh, somebody to share time with um, as time goes on. And Cole Kmet's as good as uh, a uh, a pick as any. Um, so um, I would give uh, him a B minus grade. Or that pick, I would give a B minus um, overall. And when I give these grades, it's everything considered. It's not only the player themselves, but what the Bears needed in relation to the, the player that they picked. The next, and then the next pick that I also mentioned in the previous video was Jalen Johnson, cornerback out of Utah. And he's 5'11", his uh, hometown's Fresno, California. Um, he's a fast guy, but he's um, also was a little shoddy on the tackling last year. Um, so I'm going to, but the Bears, again, the Bears did need a little help in their defense to bolster that defense, which is now very, very good. So, um, with a little bit of uh, training from the Bears staff, that guy could be a really good cornerback, especially since he's already got the speed. So I'd give him a B. Now, the next pick was a defensive lineman out of Tulsa, and that's Travis Gibson. He's 6'3", 261. Uh, he has good reach and, a, and an explosive first step, um, but most see him as a project a developmental project in the NFL. Now, I did see a couple of other people give this a D plus grade, but I'm actually going to up that a little bit to a C plus because the Bears do not intend to, as far as I can tell, they don't intend to play him on the defensive line. They are actually going to use him at linebacker. So if they use him at linebacker, his skills are probably a little better suited to that position. And so I would upgrade him a little bit. The next pick they had was Kindle Vildor. And uh, he is a cornerback out of Georgia Southern. Uh, he's 5'9", 191 pounds. He runs a uh, 440, 40-yard 40 dash. And he's not a great tackler. So um, I gave him a B-. minus, um, And really... Actually, I really should be, I probably should make that even a little worse because they, I mean, he's the second cornerback they've taken and they already have a very good defense and they had other needs that they needed. So I'm actually going to downgrade that even beyond a B minus to a, uh, I'm going to go C plus, C plus. Then you got Darnell Mooney, uh, wide receiver out of Tulane. Now they did need a wide receiver. They definitely do. Um, he's 5'10", 176 pounds. Uh, he runs a 4.38 40-yard dash. He had 40 receptions last year for Tulane 
um, and 713 yards, which is a 14.85 per yard average and five touchdowns. But remember, it was Tulane. So I would give him a B minus. We'll see. I mean, maybe he maybe he'll end up being an A. Who knows? But right now, from what it looks like, I'd give him a B minus. Um, and then the last two guys were picked in the seventh round, and like a lot of the guys like to say, there is no bad seventh round pick because the seventh round is like you know. By that time, the talent is very diluted. Uh, they took Arlington Hambright, offensive tackle from Colorado, which is good because they they lost Kyle Long, so they do need somebody on the offensive line. And uh, he's uh, <clears throat> he's six three, three hundred and seven pounds, a little undersized, but I mean they can work on that. Um, I'd give that a C, and that's mainly what most people's impression is, is that he's like a C pick. They did need somebody, though, on the offensive line. And then um, they got another offensive lineman right after that, and that was Lashavius Simmons out of Tennessee State. He's 6'5", 315 pounds, and again, probably a C pick, but you never know. They can work their way out. So that was the Bears themselves, and uh, for them, I would give, uh, I think the overall I'm going to say on the Bears draft this year was a B-. minus. Uh, that's where I really see them, because they really could have used um, a bigger time wide receiver, and they would have had to get that a little earlier than they did, um, and a little earlier than they actually got uh, Darnell Mooney. So, um, and then, uh, yeah, I, w I would say that. And then they also needed to um, bolster the offensive line, which they did, but they did it very late with players that are going to be projects more than uh, plug-and-play ready um, offensive linemen. So they could have done better, I think, but um, they, did, they did okay, B-minus is what I would say. But here's the thing. The Packers, I think, had a terrible draft, and they're our main competition. <laughs> oh, wait, you're serious. Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> they badly needed a wide receiver, maybe two, maybe three. They got none. The Packers did not draft a wide receiver. And not only that, but their very first pick was Jordan Love, who is going to be uh, the heir apparent to um, Aaron Rodgers. And if you know anything about Aaron Rodgers, he has a tendency to be salty, like a big tendency to be salty. So he's gonna be very salty about this pick. Now, whether that's going to translate to him throwing 38 touchdowns and only three interceptions and, uh, you know, go off because he's mad, who knows? It might. It just might. But he's still going to have the crappy receivers that he had last year to throw to. They also can't stop the run, and they didn't do a lot to address that. So, um, I think that they... Um, I, I don't think they're a lot better. And so if you look at the fact that their 13-3 and three season last year was, I mean, I don't want to say luck, because it, it can't be totally luck. But if you look at the fact that maybe they overperformed a little bit, then, the, you know, this year they may not be that lucky. Especially now that the Bears have a very, very good defense. So that was my impressions of the draft, um, primarily, you know, for the Bears, but also touching on how well the Packers really did. So you can expect the Packers maybe to be, I mean, I, w I wouldn't even say as good because they were 13 and 3, and the 13 and 3 might have been a little bit of luck. So you could, I think you can expect the Packers to take a step backward. And um, the Bears, 
We'll see. I mean, they didn't really do a lot to address the offense. Um, except maybe by, you know, bringing in Nick Foles and maybe he can be a better starting quarterback than Trubisky. Um, but he's not even, I mean, he's not, let's face it, he's not Joe Montana. So that's what I, I think of the draft for the Bears. B minus, not bad, not terrible, you know, but not as probably um, awesome as they could have done. So that's it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.